quilts have been around forever, but they I think they just keep evolving with the people who create them and the times and the materials that are available. I mean, they wouldn't have probably had fabric this vibrant 200 years ago. So they worked with what they had and they made beautiful things. We just have more available now. And I'm glad to see it because I think some of the old ways um, are lost. I made um, a quilt for a girl who was going to college who I knew and um, she asked me to make this quilt for her because she said she went shopping and the bedding was ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and she said she wanted something that would stand up for the rest of her life and you know so I made her this quilt but that's kind of how I feel things aren't really well made and I just want something that I can pass down in my family that's still usable I think handcrafting not just in in quilting but in a lot of different arts is really coming back stone masonry and woodworking and all, all different kinds of things, blacksmithing. I think people are really trying to keep those arts alive. I think quilting is just another one. My mother taught me how to sew. She was an excellent seamstress. I was not quite as drawn to clothing sewing as I was other things. Um, and about 15 years ago, my mother-in-law taught me how to quilt. Oh. And it, w it just really clicked with me. It was um, a chance for me to put colors together that people wouldn't necessarily wear in clothing. Um, that was, just seemed a little blah to me. Mm -hmm. um, but color, I'm really driven by color. And to be able to put colors together and shapes, um, that, just, that just really excited me about the sewing. Once you start sewing, you always have scrap bags. <laughs> And sometimes the scrap bags get big and you just need to start using up the scraps. And so that's sort of what I did. I like this size and I like the square. Something to me is very appealing about a square, maybe because usually quilts are in square patches. This one is a obviously patriotic theme. Um, some of it is, I wanted to sort of mix old fashioned and new elements. So. Um, I picked fabric pretty specifically for this one. Um, the stars are actually like rubberized stars that are on top of the fabric. So that's a pretty new kind of fabric, whereas this ticking is quite old. Um, and I just, I liked the red, white, and blue design that sort of started to evolve. Sometimes when I start one, it's, I, you know, I start with a middle piece and I think I'll build on it, and then it turns into something completely different than what I had thought it might be. Mm -hmm. um, so this one may not have started out being a patriotic quilt, but that happens quite a bit. I'll pick a middle piece, and then suddenly it turns into something else. Mostly, I just sort of let it be what it wants to be. You know, definitely the seasons are very influential, especially in New England, you know, um, they give you different feelings. You see different colors. You just get different ideas. Um, and I take a, I do take a lot of inspiration from nature. Um, I love the the stars and the like celestial look, and then flowers and you know I like fabric that looks like bark. Um, you know, it's just all different sorts of things. It's, mostly I do bright colors, but once in a while. Like I said, if I make something for someone, I made a quilt for my son, and he likes dark colors, and he had bark, um, planks of wood, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, river stones, you know, and it's it's nice. Um, I tend to more gravitate toward this, but I could be inspired by nature. I've done several pattern quilts, but I really prefer the Crazy Patch, just organic. Sometimes. I just throw fabric in a bag and I just pull out the next piece. I don't even look at what color it is or how it would ever go together and just let it become what it is. I don't necessarily even make a shape. I just sew two straight edges together, make another straight edge, sew another piece on that. And I don't think too much usually about what color goes next to what color. Occasionally you'll see um, 
I have done some monochromatic pieces, so one is completely reds, one is completely yellows, but mostly it's just a mishmash of whatever color strikes me that day. Mostly it's very organic and it just happens the way it happens. And sometimes I sew pieces together that actually get cut off and not ever seen. So it just, it sort of evolves on its own. I piece the mat material together with a machine uh -huh. and then I do the rest by hand. Okay. I'll cut the first two shapes and just sew them together. Mm -hmm. And then I'll make another straight edge and I'll grab another piece and sew it on. I don't cut all the shapes and fit them together like a puzzle and then sew them together. They just sort of arrive at whatever they are. And then I cut the whole piece into a square. They're probably 14 by 16 or, you know, they're just all funny shapes and they're not straight edged or anything on the outside. And I cut them down to the part that I want to see in the frame. And that way I can, I can just move my template around and see, like you might line up a shot in, a, in photography, you know, I can just pick out how I want it to be framed. To me, this is my art. It has to come from me. Anybody can create anything, but to me, this is my art. If people love it, that's great. That makes me happy that they understand where I got my inspiration and they can feel that. To me, this isn't a business. This is what I love to do. Like, I think an, a painter probably doesn't stand in the studio going, let's see what will sell. <laughs> you know, they want to create something that meets meaningful to them without really thinking that someday they might sell it. They might, you know, it's, it's, a, more, it's a very personal thing to me. I've done some drawing, I've done photography, I've done a little bit of painting. Um, I feel like I just don't have the patience for that, and maybe I don't have the aptitude for that. <laughs> Where this, I don't find frustrating in the least. It's fun from the beginning to the end, it's relaxing. Um, you know, I, I've achieved results with other art forms like drawing and painting, but it's more... Um, more f frustration in that, in the, that whole process. I think that takes a lot longer um, to achieve a result for me. Yeah, I think I just settled on what, what is the right thing for me. It's something that, you, that comes out of your soul. You can express yourself and someone else finds joy in it. It's very satisfying that somebody sort of gets how you feel through your art. It makes me feel great and it makes me want to continue to do it and just keep creating and um, yeah, it's, it's just very relaxing for me. It's fun. Um, I just love to see things evolve, what they're going to end up being. It's sort of like raising a child. <laughs> I want to see how they turn out. <laughs>